Stress is a part of the human condition. Unfortunately, it's something that we all deal with on a regular basis. But what do we as Christians do in response? How do we deal with stress? Is there a way that we might lessen or do away with that part of our reality on a regular basis? That's what we're going to be talking about today on Ignition. Welcome to the show. I'm your host, Dr. Chris Bergwald. And we want to set your faith ablaze so that you might live the adventure that comes from a relationship with Jesus Christ. But before we talk about stress, we want you to know that we love listener feedback. So if you have questions about today's episodes, or if you have ideas for future episodes, please contact us. The easiest way to do so is by email, and the address is ignition at sfcatholic.org. Again, ignition at sfcatholic.org. I'm joined in the studio by Renee <laughs> Kranz. Once again, hey, Renee, how's it going? Ah, it's great. How's yeah. it going for you? It's fantastic. Good. Yeah. So stress, Renee. Mm-hmm. Should we talk about stress? Yes, let's. Should we, should, can I, can I t- tell the audience why we decided to talk about this? Because it's the only <laughs> thing you agreed to discuss on ignition N- No, today? I want to tell them where it came from. Okay. So, oh, you're being serious <clears throat> now. Yes, I am. <laughs> so if you don't follow uh, the diocesan uh, social media, you may not be aware of this, but uh, you should check it out on Facebook, especially. But we had um, Brianna, our social media uh, manager, had sent over a post to me to approve, and it had a prayer for stress. And that particular day was very stressful. And I was like, <laughs> geez, that really just hit me like a ton of bricks, and I really needed that. So she posted it a couple days ago from when we're recording here, and it clearly struck a lot of people on Facebook, too, because it had like 24 shares and tons of comments and lot. And so I was like, you know, maybe there's some people feeling just a tad right. bit of stress yeah. right so, now. So, I mean, as I said in the opening, stress is just part of the human condition, mm-hmm. but maybe not as much, hopefully not as much now, but... The last couple of years mm-hmm. with the the COVID um, pandemic, right? Obviously, for a variety of reasons, been a very stressful time. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, I, I'm not surprised. I I, I was, um, uh, but ha- very happy to see how much engagement yeah. that post got. But yep. not surprised because again, it's part of life in general. But especially when we're, I think it's safe to say, coming out of a pandemic, right. there's still a lot of stress right. in people's lives. Yes. Um, so what we're going to do is, is we're going to look at this this prayer from St. Francis de Sales. Uh, but I just thought we could maybe actually start by <laughs> talking about the reality of stress. Okay. Um, and apart from the, the social media post, why we're talking about it. So yeah. this is not lead them to life. You know, this could be, right, a, right. This no. is, you know, mm. uh, our friend and colleague, Emily Leadham, the executive director of the Lord Center. This might be something she talked about. Right. Why, why, Renee, would we talk about stress and the Christian response to stress on ignition? Well, cause there, cause there is a Christian response to stress. Like there is a way that would be better for people around us and ourselves to handle it. And it involves our faith, which, right. Probably uh, Leadham would talk about too. Right, right. But just like you said, in a little different way. Yep. So I, I one of the things that I, I'm, well, I, th- I think we're both passionate about this, but I, I know I am. You can confirm or deny yourself. Okay. Is the the reality that our faith um, is meant to and can, if, if if we allow the Lord to do it, will does impact our life. Right. I think there's. Um, a tendency, which which I think we all face different ways at different times, to unintentionally compartmentalize our faith. Yeah. yeah. So f- faith is that that's the religious part of my life, and then I got the work part of my life, and I got the home part of my life, right. and I got the play part of my right. life. Whatever. Mm-hmm. The faith part is the thing I do on Sunday morning. Exactly. Yeah. Or or, may, or maybe, <laughs> maybe part of my daily prayer. Times, yeah. yeah. A couple. Of t- maybe maybe. But it, it's t- t- rather than the reality can be, should be, that faith pervades all those other aspects mm-hmm. of my life. Um, Jesus Christ is interested in every part of my life, not just the prayer part, right. not just the mass part, right. but everything right. about my life. And and he desires, and, and so this time in particular, he desires to save me not just in heaven at the end, but he wants to save me today Um from stress. Now, this doesn't mean, and I want to be very clear, we know about this, <laughs> it, 
It's not this simple. This prayer that we're going to read from St. Francis mm-hmm. of Sales is not, Lord, I'm stressed. Save me from it right. because you said you would. <laughs> Thank you. No. Amen. Right. No, it's not. Some, sometimes the Lord, he, he does try us, a trial, sure. right? He mm-hmm. does tr- to make us stronger. Mm-hmm. Um, but he is, so so uh, he's interested in every part of life. That doesn't mean he's going to just take away the stresses or the, whatever the thing is. He didn't have them taken away when he was on earth. So, no, we're recording yeah. this. Uh, we're recording the week before Holy Week, right. so we're, bu- we're about to hear the Passion right. a couple times um, in the next week. Uh, and yeah, the reality is that he and he told us we're supposed to take up our cross, mm-hmm. but there's still a way. There's still a way where we can live our life, um, even though we might experience trials with an inner freedom. Mm-hmm. We hear about this from from our boss, Bishop DeGrood, oh, yes. <laughs> uh, and his metaphor of riding the wave of grace, mm-hmm. that we can live our, our life, no matter what's externally happening to us, or even even the internal emotions or thoughts, feelings, desires we're having, there's still a way where we are able to have freedom and an inner peace mm-hmm. in the midst of the crazy. Right. Of the chaos, right. if that's what's happening in your life. Right. So I think there's a way in which we can sometimes will experience stress, but it doesn't over, over it needn't overwhelm us. That's a that's a good way to say it. Yeah, because it's really easy to allow that to happen. Yep. Yep. So. so so what we what I want to do is just sort of using this prayer. So we'll read through the prayer, but they kind of go back and riff on it and talk about. Okay. So. Um, what are ways that we can, as Christians, I don't want to say cope with stress. But how do we deal with? Mm-hmm. Uh, What's stress? the difference between coping and dealing? Yeah, I don't know. That's as I was saying that. I mean, well, is, co- is coping more just like putting up with it, where dealing with it is like actually actively trying to yeah. So so maybe instead do something of deal, about yeah, it. how do we respond yeah. rather than cope with? How do we respond yeah. to to stressful situations or the reality of stress when right. it arises? Right. Okay. Okay. Great. So here's the prayer from Saint Francis de Sales. Um, It's called Be at Peace. Do not look forward in fear to the changes in life. Rather, look to them with full hope that as they arise, God, whose very own you are, will lead you safely through all things. And when you cannot stand it, God will carry you in his arms. Do not fear what may happen tomorrow. The same understanding Father who cares for you today will take care of you then and every day. He will either shield you from suffering or will give you unfailing strength to bear it. Be at peace and put aside all anxious thoughts and imaginations. Mm-hmm. Amen. Amen. So, so <laughs> I, this is as I was reading that, oh, this is particularly relevant in the communications office <laughs> of which you are the director, right? So um, I think this is the second to last episode in which he's going to be involved. But the long time, long time produce, producer, producer, that's what producer I call of him. ignition, Bill Seeley, uh, who's off camera right he's now. He's sitting over here. Right over there. <laughs> There's his shoe. Uh, Bill is again. By the time you're hearing this, Bill's long gone. I think Bill's moving enjoying on. life. I was going to say. Else. I was thinking about this. He's not moving on to greener pastures, is Clearly he? Not. Green, no. no. But they're different pastures. I mean, he might think they're greener, but I mean, how much greener is than the diocese of Sioux Falls? I, I don't know. But this, this, you know, potentially could be. So no. He's so, feeling very uncomfortable right I know now. He I is. have a feeling he's off camera. But uh, we'll, we'll maybe talk a little bit more about Bill in the next next week's episode with the fond farewell. Right. Um, but this could, well, maybe has been when yeah. Bill first told you, yeah. Renee, there's yeah. probably some stress like, oh my gosh. Yeah. Um, so for me, I can think of times where, you know, maybe there's a lot, I mean, there's a lot going on here at work or maybe it's at home, um, kids and mm-hmm. events coming up. There's all sorts of ways that we can be stressed. Mm-hmm. So as, as, as I was. Yeah. In fact, in fact, as this is going on. My husband recently fell off a ladder and broke his wrist. And so we were waiting to hear if he needs surgery. And just all these things are happening all kind of at the same time. And it becomes overwhelming. Yep. So yep. Yeah. So part of it, and, and this is why I thought of, of, of Bill's uh, departure, pending departure, um, do not look forward in fear to changes in life. Mm-hmm. So the prayer starts off. And to be honest, to be honest, it's not really... This is not really a prayer. If you look at it, it's more of a reflection and it an is. encouragement. Yeah. 
Um, it's advice from this great saint, St. Francis de Sales. Mm-hmm. So first, do not look forward in fear to the changes in life. So we all know that we're going to experience mm-hmm. change. Yeah. Some of us are able to roll with change pretty easily mm-hmm. most of the time. But all of us, I think, even those who roll with it pretty easily, um, change can be uh, a, definitely a stress yeah. inducer. You have a limit sometimes right. that yep. you just hit the wall. Exactly. <laughs> So Francis says, don't look forward uh, in fear to the changes in life. Rather, look to them with full hope that as they arise, God, whose very own you are, will lead you safely through all things. Okay. So as changes arise in your life, remember that, first of all, God, uh, well, remember, first of all, that you are God's. Right. So this is, again, where uh, the, the impact of, um, or hopefully the influence of our faith in our daily life. I am God's. Every one of us by virtue. So as, as creatures, God has made every one of us mm-hmm. on purpose. Then by virtue of our baptism, we become sons and daughters. So we go from being his bestest, most favorite creation <laughs> to being his beloved son mm-hmm. or daughter. Mm-hmm. Um so we are we are God's own. Mm-hmm. He is what we call him a, a father. He's a loving father, and a father cares about his children. So I, I, I really think I know I have thought this or felt this before at times in my life, and I think many Catholics, even many relatively faithful, fervent, devout Catholics can still have this idea that God, yeah, he's always there and he's always watching, but he does it from a distance. Right, right. He's hands off. Yeah, yeah. And he, oh, mm-hmm. and it's sort of like, I don't know, he like sees us down here and he's, oh, look at those cute little people, what they're <laughs> doing. And, and he's and he's not, um, I think sometimes there's the whole um, stern taskmaster, right. harsh judgment. Right. But even if you have this idea, oh no, he's a loving father. But but st- I think still sometimes we put him, um, or we imagine that he is at a distance mm-hmm. from us instead of the reality, which is he's very close to us. Um, Saint Augustine, the Lord is closer to me than I'm than I am to myself. Right. He is constantly sustaining me in existence. Right. God is always thinking about me right now. Talk about this right now. God is thinking about Renee Kranz and Chris Bergwald and all the rest of us, holding us in existence in love. Mm-hmm. We are His own. Okay, so when we're thinking about change, look to change not with fear, with full hope. And as they arise, God, whose very own you are, will lead you safely through all things. So we are called by Saint Francis to look to times of change. So. Renee Kranz, mm. Bill is going to leave. You're going to be down a person again. Again. You are being called. You are being called. And we're all being called to, when we, especially when we see change coming, to look to this with the confidence that the Father will lead us safely through all things. And let me say, too, that we're, we're kind of riffing on Bill a little bit. This is probably slightly stressful for Bill, too. Maybe, or maybe he's, he's like, yes. <laughs> I mean, I mean, it is stressful to sure. even even if you want to move on to right. a new a job, change in to, job, yep. figuring out a new job, it's stressful. So there's stress on on <clears throat> all sides, and yep. and he has to try to get us ready for him not being here. So right, right, <laughs> there's right. a lot of stress so, there for him. But but so so but what Francis said there though, he, that father the father will lead us safely through all things. So I think probably Renee, people listening to this. Um, men, some of us might believe that with our heads, mm-hmm. but believing it, knowing it with our hearts is something else. Right. Why? Because we don't experience it in real life. Don't experience what in real life? Uh, the unconditional love and the getting through things safely. Like right. Someone actually takes you and gets you through it. Right. Safely. So because- we may experience it at times, but not consistently. Or it, it, especially in the way that we want right to right right so i i say this uh know that god who's very own you are will lead you safely through all things and so you, like then why did my husband fall off the ladder <laughs> like really if that's really true then why yep w- why why haven't you protected me right god from the things that have happened right. to me in my life so i think there's a way in which 
partly because of our experiences and then the reality is because of, this is one of the effects of original sin, right. we have a distrust of mm-hmm. God. Mm-hmm. A learned distrust, but also an innate distrust, unfortunately, right. Right. because of original sin. Because mm-hmm. that came about because of distrust. <laughs> exactly. It did. It did. So, uh, so we'll, we'll go on from here, but in case folks are just, in case you're just tuning in, you are listening to Ignition. Renee Kranz and I are talking about stress and how as Christians we can re- respond to it by looking at this uh, prayer, really reflection from St. Francis de Sales, be at peace. So, okay, so God will lead you safely through all things. And when you cannot stand it, God will carry you in his mm-hmm. arms. Again, I think people can hear that and say, well, those are nice words, but I don't but it, believe it. Right. <laughs> I've never, I've, I've experienced the opposite. I've never felt sure. like uh, he's been carrying me in his arms mm-hmm. when I can stand it. So what's up with that? <laughs> what's up with that? What do, we, what do you mean? So <clears throat> that we can't, that we don't feel it? Yeah. Well, I think it's the same thing. I mean, you just, you, <clears throat> we don't experience that in very many ways in real life. And we also is that because, have, is, have a really good way of forgetting. Oh, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> so the times when it has happened, yep. we forget about those. Yep. Absolutely. Yep. But I want to go back to the times when we would say, well, this hasn't happened, where God hasn't carried me in his arms, where he hasn't led me safely through all things. Is that on him or is it on me or both or neither? Well, it's not on him. Well, he's the one who Francis is saying will carry me in his arms. Well, he didn't. <laughs> I don't know how to answer that. Um, I would say he wanted to, but I didn't let him. Oh, that's probably tur- true. I didn't, I turn, didn't turn to, to him. him. Right. So God is a loving, gentle father. Mm-hmm. In difficult, stressful times, he is waiting to help us. Again, maybe not the way that we desire it, but he is waiting to help us, to save us in some way, frankly, in the way that's best, which may not be the way that we imagine it. But he is waiting to help us. But he, he's... Is this a free will thing in a way? Well, yes. So I think... Okay. So he's not like... (laughs) He's not... A helicopter daddy. <laughs> he He's <is> not. <laughs> not a slow plow, snow plow parent. I've not We're, heard that one. Snow plow? Snow plow. Snow plow, uh, snow plow parent, um, that's when you clear all the obstacles, oh, sure. all the Ahead snow of out of the way so your child has a smooth path sure. through life. That's that's not an effective parenting strategy. <laughs> uh, and that's therefore, that's not how the parent, God the Father, parents us. Right. Um, he does again allow us to experience trials, but there, but never in a way that will over, will overwhelm us. Right. He's always waiting to save us in the best way. He knows the best way. Mm-hmm. We don't. We think we do, but mm-hmm. we don't. But he will not again. He's not, so he's not going to interject himself. He wants to wait for us to turn to him, to cry out to him. Right. So I think here of uh, Saint Peter. Uh, who in boldness and faith, uh, Jesus calls him to walk in the water. Mm-hmm. Lord, if it's really you, call me out. Come out. So Peter walks on the water until? Until he looks down and he... And he until he yeah. notices, I think it's Matthew tells us, he notices the storm. Right. He takes his eyes off of Jesus. Mm-hmm. He becomes aware of the storm, the wind, the rain, and that's when he starts to sink. But he calls out to Jesus, and Jesus reaches down right. and saves him. Right. So God the Father, Jesus the Son, the Holy Spirit, the Blessed Trinity, God is always waiting to save us, just mm-hmm. as Jesus saved Peter, uh, who is sinking in, in the stormy seas. God is always waiting to save us from the stormy seas in the way that he sees fit. Another, I remember actually back very early on in the pandemic, uh, Bishop DeGrood had a, 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 one of the first videos that he did was uh, uh, around um, the calming, one of the calming mm-hmm. of the sea mm-hmm. accounts. That's and right. he has a painting, I yep. think I had a painting in, in his, his office. office. Yeah. Um, and he talked about this. It was what's in that story. Jesus is sleeping. He's mm-hmm. asleep on the cushion. Mark's <laughs> account tells us. there was a cushion. Jesus was sleeping like, Aren't you going to save us? Look, we're, we're going to sink. We're going to capsize. Um, 
and and he challenges them for their lack of faith. Right. So when I am in stressful situations, and I personally, like my tendency, I've talked about this before on Ignition many times, my tendency is to make mountains out of molehills. Oh, yeah. I tend to, and especially the future molehills, oh, this is, this thing, and it's going to be bad, it's going to go, um, and my imaginings, my imagination, which Francis talks about the end of this reflection, um, what I've learned over time, whether it's a future or present molehill that I'm building into a nice monstrous mountain, mm-hmm. is to turn to God, turn mm-hmm. to the, Jesus. Okay, and I know what I'm doing here. I've, I've done this before, right. been there, tried that, didn't work, waste of my time, <laughs> save me. And, and, and Renee, he usually does. Right. Right. Sometimes he still allows that emotional emotional turmoil to endure, linger for a while, to yeah. linger. Sometimes because he he wants me to trust him even in the midst of that. Mm-hmm. But there have other been times like no, I do I trust that God will lead, safely lead me through all things, and when I can't stand it, that He will carry me in His arms. Yes, mm-hmm. because when I turn to Him, He has right, and I need to remember that right. Yeah, like I said, I think we just easily forget, and yep. we're like, "Oh, yeah, he's never been." Wait a second, yes, he has. <laughs> he yeah, thinks exactly. back. Yep. Yes, he has. Yep. So, yeah. Okay. So Francis goes on. Do not fear what may happen tomorrow. The same understanding Father who cares for you today will take care of you then and every day. Mm-hmm. So whether it's Bill going to a new job or Renee trying to f- deal with it or. <laughs> Me, whatever the stressful thing is, kids or not the job ever. Uh, ever. Ever. No. Uh, no. No one here makes it stressful. No, ever. no, no, no. <laughs> um, do I have that confidence that the same understanding father, he understands. Mm-hmm. I understand. Mm-hmm. The same understanding father who cares for you today will take care of you then and every day. Yeah. And I think the do not fear what may happen tomorrow. We just have to remember all we can do is deal with the thing in front of us. Yes, we have to make plans for things, but we have to just deal what's in front of us at the moment and and just keep moving forward. Exactly. And so. if, if we're, and even in our planning, and sometimes sometimes it is prudent to plan right. for the worst case scenario or the yes, the, to an the, extent. the yes. badder case scenario. But we can't like hire two bills because one bill might leave. Exactly. I mean right. that would be right. great. Right. But. right. Right. <laughs> I, I won't want that. But. Uh, one, has, one, bill one has been enough. enough for my 20 years in the diocese. Um, right, but, but we can plan, but we, but we still should have that trust. No, the understanding father who is caring for me today mm-hmm. has cared for me in the past, will continue to do so. So there was an instance, I don't, I really, I'm not, I'm just, I'm not um, blurring the details to save the, protect the innocent. <laughs> I don't remember that, but I do remember an instance, oh, I, I vaguely remember what it was. Um, I, there, a couple weeks ago, there was something where, oh, this is going to be this way. And, and I realized, wait, not necessarily. How, right. how do you know that? You're worrying. Mm-hmm. This is all about worry and anxiety. Right. About what might happen. Mm-hmm. No. Do you? Do I believe in God or not? Right. And not just like, again, he's not out there, but that he's near to me. Right. That I am dear to him and that he will care for me. Right. Right. Okay. <clears throat> He will either shield you from suffering. So this is, yeah. He will either, it, he, it, San Francisco does, Francis does not say, he will shield you right. from suffering. He does not no. say that because it's this not Not always true. true. He will either shield you from suffering or will give you unfailing strength to bear it. Mm-hmm. Be at peace and put aside all anxious thoughts and, and imaginations. imaginations. The imaginations, that's the making the mountain out of a molehill. Yep. Like we just are, it's clearly going to be much worse than I think it's going to be. Right, so right. you blow yep. it up. Exactly. We blow it up. And <laughs> and again, what good does that, do? because even yeah. if I'm right, me doing this right. is doing is solving no problem. Right, right. We You'd think, be better off to use your time to figure out how you're going to deal with that exactly. thing right. rather than just worrying about it and right. creating it. Right. And maybe even more the, to turn to him in prayer. Right. Okay. This is coming. I don't know how it's, I'm afraid it's going to go badly. Right. Help me. Right. I, 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 I believe, I believe help my unbelief. Ah, yes. I have That's faith. That's a good one. Not a lot, but I have some. <laughs> not a lot. <laughs> that's beyond. That's, that's He true. knows how, he yeah. 
he, yeah. he knows the my faith is the side of a mustard seed. Right. Size of a mustard seed. Right. That's not a surprise. Really, Chris? I didn't know that. <laughs> he knows. So again, he 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 might shield us from suffering, mm-hmm. but he might not. However, if he doesn't, he will give me unfailing strength to bear it. Right. So um, there might be suffering that he asks me. He might ask me to carry a difficult cross. Right. But he will give me the strength to bear it, to carry it, and not collapse underneath its weight. Mm-hmm. So I think that's the other thing. We're afraid of suffering because we think we won't be able to tolerate it. Right. It'll be too much for right. us. Right. That will collapse under its weight. Yep. Totally. So what Francis is reminding us here is that, no, no, no. He'll give you the strength to yeah. bear it. So can you, and again, you don't need to give us the details, but can you think of a time yourself where God um, did permit you to experience suffering, but where you maybe in the moment or maybe looking back after the fact saw that he gave you the strength. Yeah. To yeah. I, actually, there was a somewhat recent one. I had to do a <clears throat> medical procedure that I was terrified of. And uh, <clears throat> after talking to some friends, uh, you tried to use the, the fear, the, the suffering that I thought was going to come in a useful way. Mm. And then when we went through the procedure, it wasn't nearly as bad as I thought it was going to be. <laughs> so right. he actually did shield me from some of the suffering there, I think, because I actually turned to him beforehand and like prepared right. Right. rather than just being afraid the whole time. Exactly. Yep. And then there are those times when we, well, yeah, we think we experienced the full suffering. Right. But maybe we didn't. Maybe we didn't. Uh, <laughs> but he does give us the strength, right. the the ability to endure it. So again, this might be physical suffering. It might be emotional suffering. It might be the suffering because of a loved one's suffering. Right. Um, that can be difficult f- for us ourselves. Right. Grief, mm-hmm. uh, great example. Mm-hmm. Um, we're, we're an emotional suffering. Do we turn to him with the confidence that he will give us the strength to bear it? Right, right. So, Renee, we've got half a minute left. Any any final thoughts um, from you on the reality of suffering and how we as Christians can respond to it? Again, not cope with it, not just deal with it, right. but respond to it. No, I hope that I hope that this will be helpful for people because I know that there's a lot of stress. Even though the pandemic's over, there are a lot of other things going on in the yep. world and in our lives. And I hope you'll just like take it and use it the best you can and turn to God whenever you can. Exactly. Well, all the time. All the time. Yeah. Yeah. Right. <laughs> Yeah, exactly. And I think so that I think that's kind of the 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 parting advice. Like yeah. when you experience suffering, as soon as you can, turn to the Lord and he trusts that he will save you. Right. Great. Right. Thanks, Renee. Yeah, thank you. And that will wrap up this episode of Ignition. Again, you can email us ignition at sfcatholic.org with any thoughts about today questions about today's episode or ideas for your for future episodes. Until next time, may God bless you.